thank you for signing up into, into and attending this uh, webinar on Safe Self Rescue. Um, it is the first webinar that's been delivered as part of the Swim England's commitment to improving the standard of school swimming and as part of your membership to the School Swimming and Water Safety Charter. So I hope you do enjoy this and you do get something out of it. Uh, there will be myself, Sue Barlow, Programme Manager for School Swimming, uh, and Mandy Mason, Learn to Swim Manager, taking you through this uh, session today. If you have got any questions um, throughout the presentation, if you could either send them to the chat box and we will pick them up, or there will be um, an option to ask questions at the end of the presentation. So we'll go on to the purpose of the session. Uh, I think Michelle's uh, gone through a little bit of this, but what we're going to look at is the national curriculum requirements, specifically safe self-rescue, and what does this mean? Um, so looking at actually what does actually does that mean within the national curriculum? Uh, safe self-rescue within the school swimming and water safety charter, and then looking at the support re resources and campaigns that can help you with the delivery of safe self-rescue in your school swimming programmes or your delivery. Okay. So moving on to the next slide. Michelle, could you click on the next slide, please? Thank you. So tech, tech issues. <laughs> sorry about that. You'll see here, you know, having a look at what are the benefits of learning to swim at school, and there are many as you can see from there. The two main ones, for me particularly, um, following the tragic events of the last week, are the drowning prevention and the core life skills. If the poor people that have uh, got into difficulty over this last weekend had had the opportunity to learn about safe self rescue within school, then they may have had a better chance of actually surviving when they hit the water um, at the weekend. It's it's a dreadful dreadful thing as the swimming teacher for to to comprehend. But it's the third most common cause of accidental death in children in England. So School swimming is just absolutely crucial to our children's future. Next slide, please, Michelle. For me, one of the most important things is that the, the children that don't learn to swim at school are likely to be the ones that never, ever learn to swim. And they could be the ones that get into trouble in, uh, in hot weather, think it's the same temperatures as swimming pool, which we all know it isn't. It's unlikely that they, the children that don't learn to swim at school may never learn to swim, and that is just unacceptable. Next slide, please. Looking at the figures from the Sport England Survey, Active Life Survey that were released in December last year, 77% of children that are leaving Key Stage 2 able to swim a minimum of 25 metres. When you look at the least, less, active, uh, less affluent families, that drops down to 42%. Now, 77%, it doesn't look that bad, but that still leaves 23% of children unable to swim and unable to keep themselves safe. Frighteningly, that drops down to 58% for the least affluent. The chances are also the people that are hitting that 58%, the children are also likely to be the least active. Next slide, please. Okay, um, so as you can see, this is what actually the children have got to be able to be taught um, as part of the national curriculum for key stages one and or two. Um, the, the middle one is what we're actually going to have a look at today is performing safe self rescue in different water based situations. If we look at that slide, that's the only information that Department of Education actually provide to schools as part of the PE curriculum. So really, what do we have to deliver and assess against? Can we have the next slide, please? 
So what does this mean about, say, self-rescue? Well, what we've got to get uh, across to those pupils is then to have a knowledge and understanding of the key water safety messages. And we're going to look at them on the next slide. Uh, so I'm not going into too much detail in that. Know how and when to use appropriate survival and safe rescue skills. So what those skills they use and, and, and uh, provide in a school swimming programme, it's how would they use them if they unintentionally fell into water. Knowledge and understanding of local and national water hazards. So it's not just about giving them information about the beach flags when they go to the beach. It's about giving them information about rivers and canals, anything that's local to their home or their school. So they can actually relate to what they've got to do and how those to use those skills. And then a knowledge of what to do if others get into trouble. So what we're trying to move away from now is getting those children to make rescues. It's about keeping themselves safe in, uh, if they get into trouble. And what would they do if they did find somebody else in, in trouble? So we will go through that a little bit later. So the water safety um, key messages. Probably everybody's heard of the uh, SAFE code. Well, we have moved away from that now. Um, and the reason why is when they did research in, into young people and asked them what the SAFE code were, people couldn't remember it. They couldn't remember what the S and the A and the F or the E stood for. So what they've tried to do is simplify this. And these are the three, uh, the, sorry, the four key messages now. And it's always swim in a safe place. Always swim with an adult. If you fall in, float, breathe and relax, and if someone else is in trouble, then obviously call emergency services. But what we're trying to do with this as well is get underpinning messages across about the local and national hazards that pupils must be aware of. So if you think about always swimming in a safe place, it's about stopping and thinking, what is a safe place? We know that water is always moving. But does the pupils, do the children know that it's always moving? It may look still on top, but it's about those underwater hazards as well. And obviously the water is colder than what you think. And about the edges can be dangerous. So if they do fall in, how can they get out? You know, where's the best place to get out? And obviously about the dangers underwater. So always through with adult. It's about never swimming alone. So always go with that family member. Find a safe place to go. So swim where there is lifeguards. Uh, that's the safest place to be. And plan for the activity. So it's about giving them knowledge and understanding about the weather, about the tides, and get local advice of what to, of what to um, wear in the right clothing. The next one is if you fall in, flow, breathe and relax. And I think this is about um, getting that message about cold water shock as well. So that should be learned on the back of this as well. So if you fall in, float until you can feel calm. Signal for help. Then once you get your breath and you're relaxed, then you can have a look around and see if you can actually swim to safety. And the last one is about getting that emergency services. So the children should never, ever be going into the water to perform a rescue. So it's about getting that um, that emergency service dial in 999 or 112. So these are, these are the key water safety messages now that's actually been changed within that safe self-rescue. Okay, next one. Okay, so these are some of the skills that we're looking to do um, to be able to teach those pupils when we're actually um, in your school swimming lesson. So we've, we've mentioned about float and regulate your breathing. We should be taught alongside cold water shock. So it's about how they react when they fall into water. And they're treading water. So why do they have to tre tread water? It's about once they've got that, they've regulated their breathing and they're relaxed in water, they can tread water to assess that situation, to see where they are, see if they can swim to to the side, see if they can swim to any buoyancy aids. And then we've got rotation, which is a vital part of, say, self-rescue. If a child can't rotate from their front to back so they can rest, then it's a vital skill lost. 
signal for help. Now, we used to signal for help when they're treading water and raising one arm in the air and waving. Well, it's just about raising that one arm in the air now and keeping it straight. So that's the, the changes to signal for, rest, uh, signal for help. Huddle position. It's about if there's a group of pupils in the water, how would they keep themselves um, to, uh, together and remain, uh, remain maintain their body heat? Okay, if they are together and, as well, they've got more chance of any rescuers seeing them than if they're on their own. So it's about keeping them together, keeping that body heat, maintaining morale so they can talk to each other as well. The heap escape lessening position, which is the help position, so this is about keeping that body heat if they're on their own and how they can actually signal for help while they're doing that as well. The survival stroke. An important one is about keeping the head out of the water, keeping their arms under water, and again, it's an alternating arm and leg action. By doing this, they are conserving that energy as well. And also about safe exit. So if you're actually doing this uh, skill in the pool, what is the different ways that we can get the children to exit the pool safely without using probably the ladders or the steps? So it's about getting those different delivery options and getting different activities to be able to perform some of these skills that they could relate to then if they did unintentionally fall into water. So if we have a look at the school swimming and water safety charter, you'll find that Space Self Rescue is embedded right from the very start. It's, um, it's a crucial part of the national curriculum is it, and it's the main difference between the regular swimming lessons that children attend uh, after school and school swimming. The difference being that the whole of school swimming is based around keeping the children safe, getting them to be, have an understanding of how they can keep themselves into, get themselves into a safe position and get themselves hopefully out of any, any difficulties. Next slide please. As, it, as we said, there are six core awards, and they're right from the very first award. If you can push to the next one, next slide, then. So let's have a look at the. We just picked a couple of the awards out to have a look and see where we include where Space Staff Rescue is included. If you have any questions along the way, please just pop them into the chat box to everyone, and uh, we'll answer those as soon as they come through. Sorry? Okay, so looking at School Swimming Award 1, obviously enter the water safely is, is a safe self rescue. You don't know, hopefully they won't have to enter the water, but if they do have to, how are they going to do it safely? It's not just about jumping in, uh, you don't know what's under the water, so there's an element there of discussion on what might be under the water, how can we get into the water safely? Move forwards, backwards, sideways. This is if they are managing to find the way, how do they know what's on the floor? If you just jump in, you don't know, so check the floor and see what's there. Scoop the water and wash your face. If children are comfortable with being splashed, hopefully that will avoid them being a little bit nervous and panicking if they get um, into, into difficulties in water. Blowing bubbles. If they get water, God forbid they get water in the mouth, they know how to get rid of it. But again, it's not something that's going to frighten them excessively. Taking part in a movement game, it's all part about learning how to move around in the pool. Um, two examples of pool rules, goes without saying, and the recognise and identify, identify the purpose of each flag. Again, that goes without saying, an understanding of where is safe to swim in the water and where is not. Exit the water safety, like Sue said in the last one, different ways of getting out of the water. So right from the very start, a lot of the award there is based around um, safe self rescue. <coughs> Excuse me, let's one thing. Thank you. So jumping over to stage four, sorry, swimmer award four. Jumping into the water, again, hopefully they won't ever have to do this, but if they're in a position that, uh, for instance, they're on a boat and they need to get off very quickly, 
how's the safest way to jump into the water, they have to be able to submerge and surface to swim to the surface to get back. Push and glide towards the pool floor in case they need to go down and get some get underneath something to get to escape from whatever it is they're at. Changing shapes whilst floating. Again, the very basic thing as swimming teachers and as lesson providers, but also as, as school teachers that we need to get over to these children, is that by floating and regaining their breathing, they're more likely to be able to survive. Cold shock is, is a terrifying thing. Get them onto the back, get them floating, get them to get their breath, uh, to re restart their, their breathing problem. Push and glide on front and extend with a log roll on the back. If they're not confident with being able to move from their front to the back and vice versa, that could be an issue. Trouble on the front and perform a tuck to rotate onto the back. Same sort of thing. 10 metres on the front with feet off the pool floor. Again, this goes without saying, getting them to be able to move in any way. We're not expecting perfect technique by any stretch of the imagination. Whatever it takes to get them to safety or to a floating object so that they can keep themselves safe is really, really important. And again, a shout and signal rescue and explain how to get help, exit the water without using steps. So hopefully you can see what we're trying to say is with safe self-rescue, anything that we do, we're doing as swimming teachers, we need to be linking back to how is that influencing this child to keep themselves safe. Uh, can I just uh, come in there as well? If obviously, we can see these are the outcomes in the awards. And yes, this is what uh, pupils have got to be able to do to, uh, to be assessed against that award. But just for some of these um, outcomes, it's about what the outcomes are and how they are related to safe self-rescue. So for instance, outcome six, travel five meters on the front, perform a tuck to rotate onto the back and return to the side. Why are they doing that? And where should they use that skill relating to safe self-rescue? So if they did fall into open water, then they've got an, an idea of, yes, I've got to travel on my front. Oh, I'm getting a bit tired. So let's rotate onto my back and try and get back to the side. So it's about relating those outcomes back to safe self-rescue. So they have a knowledge and understanding of what and where to use those skills. And the next slide, please. So within the charter, there is the Safe Self Rescue Award, which can be achieved throughout, or it can be attempted throughout the entire programme. It teaches Safe Self Rescue in different water-based situations. So that's really quite a crucial thing. If there are the children to be understanding what they're, where Are you okay, Mandy? Oh, sorry. Did uh, I must have muted myself by mistake. I'll start that again. Safe self-rescue awards can be achieved at any time really throughout the programme. And it teaches safe self-rescue in different water-based situations, which is really quite important, depending on where the children are, because there are all sorts of areas of water that are extremely dangerous. Could be a local canal, it could be a river, it could be a pond, it could be, it could, it could even be um, a paddling pool in the garden. So it's helping the children to understand the challenges and the potential dangers. More importantly for me, it is teaching them how to be aware of keeping themselves so they don't get there to get into any problems. Next slide, please. We've just got a question on All that right. one. Yeah. Um, let me just find it. <laughs> Can this award be achieved in shallow yes. water? So I'm going to leave that one to you. Um, what we're trying to do with this award is give every child the opportunity to experience um, the safe self rescue skills. Now, some of in some of the in some of the, the skills in this award, they are not in the uh, awards one to six. 
So what we're trying to do is get as many children as possible doing these skills. So if they are, if they can't swim, then let's get them, uh, you know, with some flotation aids, personal flotation devices, and get them actually uh, developing these skills as well. So they have still got a knowledge, an understanding of what these uh, skills are used for. So yes, they can actually be done in shallow water as well. Obviously, I, it would be great if we could get them in deeper water, but I noticed Kiki is saying that uh, your pool is only 0.9 metres deep. Um, so it's, it's the it's actual learning of the skills that's important so that they know, God forbid, that they do get into difficulty what to do. And as long as you're teaching them that it might be different in in different water spaces, then you should be okay. Is that, is that right, Sue? Yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting to unmute myself. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, and it's like I say, it's like what it just says about that knowledge and understanding of those skills and where they can use them. So, yes, you're correct there, Mandy. Thank you. And the next slide, please, Michelle. So, looking at the award itself, if we look at some of the um, criteria in this one, floating on the back, absolutely basic that, they, that we need to get that. Uh, as an understanding. Treading water, as Sue has mentioned before, swimming 15 metres on the front, rotate onto the back to a floating object. Um, help position, swim 10 metres, retaining the floating object, so it's getting them used to being able to swim with holding on to some sort of object. Taking up the huddle position, swim using a long arm front paddle. Climb out of the water at least full reach depth and discuss when the skills might be used. Now, there's various different ways of doing this. It could be set uh, as individual outcomes. Let's have a look at how you're going to fall in. Or, you know, let's try falling in. It's slightly different. Can you float on your back? There's different ways that you can do this. Um, and it's, a, it's about the most important thing that you can be teaching a child. As a swimming teacher, the most important thing I can be teaching any child that I'm with is how to keep themselves safe. But it's also having understandings of where they're going to lose the heat. So with the heat escape less than the position, most of the heat is lost, lost from the head in between the legs and in between the arms, which is why you keep everything so tightly closed and close in. You could look uh, at using these outcomes as a discussion in school. So if you're having a, um, a session on, say, self-rescue or more to safety, you can ask these questions. There's a lot of information within the charter download that uh, are part of your, your membership that you can use with them. You could set up at the pool with the help of your lesson provider a circuit so that they spend a certain amount of time with each activity and work around the pool to try things out. One of the things that it would also be great for them to try, um, and I'm, I'm sure Keith, you could manage this with, with your pool as well, they'd love this, is to get them to swim in, t in, t in some clothes, so possibly a t-shirt and shorts, or pyjamas or something, obviously risk assess it before you do this, and discuss it with your lesson providers as well. Um, and just try it, and see that it is different swimming in clothes than it is in just a costume. One centre that I've, I've worked with puts on a safety week, if you like, it probably links in with drowning prevention week as well. And what they did was to have sinking seaweed, the plastic seaweed that you can, that's got weights at the bottom, so they can try swimming through that. They also had a big tub of ice water on the pool side for the children to put their hands in so they can see the difference in the temperature. Anything that it takes to take over, um, to get over rather the message that swimming in open water is totally different to swimming in a pool is really, really important. Just noticed a comment there. Can we use sitting on a wobble noodle, noodle to do treading water? Um, well, you could certainly try it. I mean, we've just done some filming up in Salford case and we used quite shallow water and the children were still 
treading water there. It's not so easy, I have to admit, but it's a matter of trying to get them to get their knees higher and trying, well, trying to get them to get their knees higher and see if they can actually affect the, the proper skill that way. You could try it, certainly with noodles, and see if it works. It may be that some of the guys on the course have got some different ideas as well for trying this in shallow water. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, next slide, please, Michelle. So, sorry, Mandy, uh, just, just going back. Did you mention about wearing clothes? Yes. Oh, right, that's fine. Sorry. Who are you not listening to? <laughs> I had a mad moment then. <laughs> oh, so, jumping back to the uh, charter again, what we've got in there are some assessment sheets that will allow you to keep track of what your children, excuse me, what your children are achieving within each uh, within the, within the um, scheme. What you'll notice on these sheets is the sections in blue are specifically linking back to safe self-rescue. And that goes right the way through the scheme, right the way from the first wall through to the sixth one as well. Next one, please. So I'm going to pass you over to Sue for this one. Okay. Okay, um, right, just before we actually go into uh, this next section about supporting resources, has anybody got a question that they would like to um, ask uh, regarding the information that we've covered so far? If you have, just unmute your microphone. Okay, we must be doing a good job. Okay, so supporting resources. Now, probably you've seen some of these resources uh, because they are part of the uh, School Swimming and Water Safety Charter. But uh, the first one, which is School Swimming and Water Safety in the National Curriculum, Water Safety, that is part of the charter sign up. Um, and in that document, it does go through the key water safety messages. So it's there to look back on. Um, and, and look at what the underpinning knowledge is as well. Um, what should be taught at Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2? So it goes into a little bit of detail of how you can actually embed uh, water safety, and not just in the pool, but in the classroom as well. Um, so, so that's a good thing as well. Um, safe self rescue skills. So there's a brief information about the skill, brief description of what the skill is, and teaching points. Uh, and what the pupils should be taught as part of that skill. And that goes all the way through those same self rescue skills that we uh, saw earlier. So that is a very good document to look back at, um, and especially when you are teaching those skills. Uh, the next document, which um, is the water safety resource, I think Michelle's covered it up, but never mind. Um, that one is a free downloadable resource from the uh, swimming.org slash schools website. It has been produced uh, by the curriculum swim group on behalf of the Department of Education. And again, um, it, is, it gives the information about importance of teaching primary schools about water safety. Um, it gives you more information about cold water shock and how it affects the body. And both those resources provide useful links to the other water safety organisations where there's lots of more resources that you can download and use within your school swimming lessons to deliver those water safety um, key messages as well. So the next uh, resource is, uh, if you've been looking in the school swimming charter, is a presentation and a presentation about water safety that can actually be used within that school environment. So we're starting to look at how we can provide knowledge and understanding, not just at the pool, but in that classroom environment as well. So that's a presentation that uh, schools can use. 
The other resource, as well as part of the charter, is lesson plans. And these lesson plans go through sort of scenarios that you can use uh, with your pupils uh, to get them up in a knowledge and understanding of what the skills that they learned and how they used it in that different scenario. So those are the resources that are part of uh, the School Summit Charter. So we have got further resources, which is on the next slide, Michelle. And these are linked to SwimSafe at the moment. Um, and these can be actually downloaded um, from the SwimSafe site. And these, again, can be used as activity sheets back at school. Um, we are hoping to get these as part of the uh, charter going forward, but they are available uh, from SwimSafe. And they are very good resources to use. And it gives them about uh, water safety shop. They can produce a, a T-shirt. They can produce a warning sign. Uh, so it is about. Uh, looking back of what that knowledge is. And the other supporting resources regarding SwimSafe, um, obviously there's lots of resources on there if they become uh, part of that SwimSafe uh, initiative. But again, it's about what those skills that they learn in that swimming pool and how they then can put it into that cold water or that open water environment. Um, so those are the other resources from SwimSafe. And they do get a little badge. <laughs> um, right, the next ones are campaigns that we support and run as part of the school swimming um, delivery. And the one is the Drowning Prevention Week, which again, uh, I'm sure you've heard uh, quite a lot of media around that. The uh, Drowning Prevention Week has just been taken place. Uh, and we know a lot of schools, swim schools, lesson providers have taken part in this. We do work in partnership with the RLSS um, to promote their Drowning Prevention Week. Um, so it is a good initiative and a good campaign to go into. The Big School Swim, um, that's Swim England's uh, celebration of school swimming, uh, that is run in November. And it's about schools celebrating, having fun, having um, different delivery uh, options about, it can be either about swimming, it can include, say, self-rescue, uh, but it's just a celebration of uh, school swimming. And then about the Swim Safe, which is, again, uh, Swim England and the RNLI initiative. And that's about getting those children into an open water environment. So again, like I said before, whatever they learn in that school swimming program, they can then put it um, into effect in an open water environment. Um, and again, all of these are on the Charter Resource Hub. Uh, so again, you know, um, if you go into that, you'll be able to get more information about those campaigns. Um, and we will give you, um, well, the website is there as well on the bottom, but we will send out that information. But one thing that we are trying to get over to uh, deliverers of school, um, school swimming is that it's not just a one-off about safe self-rescue. It's about learning that safe self-rescue all the way through their school survey program. Um, so we can um, we can you know get that message across. That will be great. Okay, so I'm just getting some messages from Michelle here. Uh, just regarding the Big School Swim, the registration page has just opened. Um, so again, you know, if you are looking to uh, celebrate that school swimming by any means, uh, you know, log on to that uh, website and, and register for that campaign. Uh, it's a brilliant campaign. Thank you, Michelle. And these are the useful links. Um, now again, Obviously, there's different uh, links there. There's uh, the Swimming Club Teaching Swimming Hub. That will then, if you go onto that, that will take you directly to school swimming. It'll take you directly to learn to swim. Uh, there's all sorts of information on there. Swimming on, on the national curriculum. That's about training to upskill uh, staff, uh, not just swimming, uh, not just school teachers, but swimming teachers as well. Uh, and obviously, the school, uh, school swimming and water safety. Uh, link there and also the contact details if there is anything regarding school swimming that you just want uh, an answer to you want uh, advice or support the best email address is school swimming at swimming.org 
Um, so, but this information will be sent out to you after the um, the training today. Uh, so you'll have all that information to hand as well. Okay, and I think we should have question time. If anybody's got any pressing questions, uh, they can either do it through chat or if they want to unmute themselves and ask that question. But uh, just be careful, we'll just come do it once at a time. Okay, Keith asked uh, the rest of you guys on the call, have you got any ideas on how he could teach treading water in 0.9 metres? Has anybody got any ideas or any tips that we could use, that Keith could use? Just unmute you or your phone. Nobody's got any ideas? Oh. Well, Keith, we'll, we'll have a try at that and we'll, uh, we'll get in a pool and have a go and let you know how that goes. Will the presentation, I know, bless Keith, I'm with you. Um, the charter, are these, oh, the charter hub, what was the question for that one? Where's the lesson plan ideas? Where do you get the lesson plan ideas from, not the swim safe one? So are you talking about where do we get them from or where can you access them? Uh, have you got an answer? I mean, the, the lesson plans that we just spoke about, they are actually on the um, charter, uh, sign up to the school swimming charter. Uh, there is um, a number of lesson plans on there, and I think there is either two or three um, lesson plans regarding uh, safe self rescue. Sue, so, not Sue Barlow, the other Sue, is that? Um, does that answer your question? Is that what you wanted to find out? If you can just drop us a text or unmute, that would be great. Um, will this presentation be shared? Yes, we will send a, a PDF over to you. Where can I, where can I access? So where can I access it? Yes, you've got the answer. If you register for a school swimming and water safety charter, which there's a link on the website, which is uh, school, sorry, swimming.org forward slash school swimming. There's a, a registration page there for you to register, uh, which I think answers yours. Any other questions? Yeah, Sue, can I just ask a quick question? It's Colette. Um, with regards to the shout and signal rescue, does the charter only cover the shout and signal? Because we tend to cover uh, reach and throw as well. We do a three-stage water safety program for our schools. Okay, um, yes, uh, to be quite honest, the school swimming charter only covers um, the shout and signal. Now, uh, we do encourage them a shout and signal and they can do a throw. Uh, so if they, you know, if there's any buoyancy aid, then they can uh, throw a buoyancy aid to aid that uh, rescue. Um, but obviously, these are the minimum recommendations. Now, yeah. there is nothing to say that once they've gone through that minimum recommendation and they are aware and got that knowledge and understanding that they should never go into uh, water to affect that rescue, then there's nothing to say that you can extend your programme. That's, that's good. Um, because, as I say, we do a three stage programme uh, from the section right the way through to year six. And we also go into schools and do presentations on a regular basis mm -hmm. on water safety. I mean, for me, that's exactly what we would uh, what we yeah. would love the lesson providers to be doing with schools, because it shouldn't be just the children that come swimming that get access to water safety. Um, that's right. Intuition. I have to admit, I think it's welcomed by the schools, mainly because when we do go into schools to do the presentation, we don't charge them. It is a free uh, service that we offer. So I know that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, this is the sort of thing that we do want. But as part of that national curriculum, it's about performing safe self rescue. So it's about keeping themselves safe. So that's what we're trying to get across to those children. Uh, it's about keeping themselves. But like I say, it's nothing to say that you can do that extended 
program if you feel that they've got that knowledge and understanding that they don't put themselves in danger. Yeah, no, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Keith, the, the three points that you're talking about, are, are they the outcomes, the national curriculum outcomes you're talking about? Which, if they are, no, what Colette was just mentioned. All right, go on, Colette. Can you explain what your three points are, please? Well, the three stages that we do. Yeah. So we have uh, a basic water safety, which is shout and signal. It'll be treading water for um, 30 seconds. It'll be a scrabble jump, um, help and huddle, and some sculling and floating. And then we build on that with our next award. So they'll do those kind of things a little bit longer. Uh, we'll add in a few more uh, things that are slightly more difficult and dependent on the age change to a throw rescue. And as they're older, because we have some schools that swim from reception right the way through to year six, we then move on to doing a reach rescue uh, with the older ones. Okay, that, uh, that sounds great. Everything that you were saying there is covered within the awards of the school swimming and water safety. Yeah. We, we just basically build on the basics and um, you know, sort of make sure they can tread water for longer. Uh, they're all they always swim in clothes when they do it so we have a water safety week and uh, not only just for schools but for the center as a whole every single term so we do it we, we go through the award at least once a term with them brilliant brilliant i've just noticed uh, another question there how proficient are we expecting the school children to swim 25 meters uh, i have some schools who are happy for them to just travel 25 meters this one is, um, I'm probably going to hand over to Sue on this one, but we've got some uh, videos coming out that will help you to standardise this. Sue, do you want to take this one? Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> um, yes, as Mandy said, uh, we have got video footage uh, that we are bringing out to look at the minimum expected uh, assessment standards for swimming 25 metres. And what we are looking for is a recognised stroke. So we're not looking for technically correct strokes, but a recognised stroke that you can see, yes, it is front crawl. So we do say that the face has got to be in the water, but we're not saying that they've got to turn their head and do bilateral breathing. So they can lift their head up and breathe. Now that is the minimum uh, requirement and then obviously we do progress uh, along with that. Um, so we are looking at recognised strokes, not technical correct strokes. So again, uh, if they are probably travelling, we don't look for, as we call, front paddle or back paddle. We are looking for over water arm recovery. Okay. I think that's probably answered it right. Yeah, great. Have we got any further questions? I mean, one of the things that I would ask everybody on the call today is what would you like any future webinars to be based on? We know what we think is of value to you. But it would be really useful for us to know what you want, games. Okay, yeah, we can do that. That's no problem. We would also we were thinking about cross-curricular links. So how to link in the work that you're doing at school within the school swimming lessons. So that, that for instance, um, uh, numeracy and literacy. How to link that into what I'm teaching as a swimming teacher. So that could be one. Scheme of work with already one up in the charter. Uh, a flexible one with cross curricular links. Yeah, we can we can do that. So if you're not if you can't think of anything right now, please please email us at schoolswimming at swimming.org because the school swimming and water safety charter is not just there and that's the end of it. It's a developing program and it will continue to develop. To develop as we go along with more and more areas of interest for lesson providers and for schools as well. So please let us know. 
I think as well, just going on from that mandate, is if anybody else got any resources, lesson plans that they work well within their school swimming programme, please share with us. Um, you know, we can provide things, but you are the ones out there delivering. So if you've got some great resources, uh, you know, and you're willing to share, then share with them and get them out there to other, uh, other teachers and providers as well.